first opening statement, or we'll jump to questions. All right, thanks, guys, for coming out. Obviously, uh, you missed the spring ball finish practice number seven. Um, the guys are out there working hard. A lot of new faces that continue to step up and do things that a lot of our vets and guys that have been here in the past uh, continue to shine. But I like the competitive nature. I like where we're at, but we still have a lot of work to do. We continue to go back now that most of our installation is done in offense and defense, and even in special teams, to continue to focus on the fundamentals and see ways that we can continue to improve. I'm on our coaching staff every day. Hey, let's not lose sight of the basic things that are going to let us have success late in the season. So we continue to harp on that, uh, find ways that we can get better during our individual drills so they'll carry over uh, to what we want to see on a day-in, day-out basis. But I'm, I'm pleased with the work ethic. I'm pleased with the guys' mindset where we're at. And it, we, look, we got eight more practices, you know, and that includes the spring game. And I, I think we're taking the steps in the right direction. And we're going to continue to push and, and strive. Um, Look, there's some guys that are doing some really good things and some guys that got to step up. But all in all, pleased with day seven and uh, look forward to continue to see where we can grow. Uh, I got like Mario Anderson. Just how is he for, for starters just learning the playbook uh, and just getting acclimated with the offense? Yeah, I mean, that's always the first thing, right? You want a guy that obviously came here in January. You want a, a young man to first and foremost learn the basics of our offense. And he's done a great job. Obviously, he's played at a high level. You know, he's a starter in the SEC. Um, a Division II All-American who's come here, and, and he's got great intelligence. And that's the very first thing is, hey, learn the basics of this offense, and then you know we'll master that after the spring. And he's picking new things up every single day. Um, and as he gains confidence, you're seeing him run the ball better and better each day. You know, I think sometimes when you're uh, hesitant or unclear, hey, what's the read? This is a new play we just put in this morning. What's that supposed to look like? But he's coming out. Uh, he's running hard and doing a lot of good things. And I'm pleased with all of our running backs. And he had said that. Looking back at his past, he said just the, the maturity level that he is now is way different than than when he was going into D2. And so just for, for you, what is his maturity level like uh, in the time that you've been able to spend with him? Yeah, you know, there's a big difference. We have some 17-year-olds out there on the field, and we have some 23-year-olds out there on the field. And obviously Mario is one of the vets that's played a lot of football. And you, you always hope that those 23-year-olds, those guys that played football, um, have a firm understanding, one, first and foremost, of the way to do things, right? This is how you act like a pro. This is how you act like a major Division One college student athlete, and he's done that. And, you know, just getting to know him, it, it's been a, a lot of fun to get to understand him and who he is as a young man and as an individual. Um, very intelligent, cares, takes a lot of pride. And you're talking about a guy that's embraced being in Memphis. You know, from the day he got here, uh, even before classes started, um, him and I went to lunch, and he just talked about the pride and, and wanted to represent the 901 and do it the right way. And when you talk that way, usually it shows up on the field, and I think we're seeing that day in and day out with him. Brian, obviously some pretty big news today. Just how excited are you about that? Yeah, look, uh, I'm very pleased, and like I said, I'm honored and humbled to be the head coach here at the University of Memphis. This is all accumulation of the hard work of so many other coaches, of so many other staff members, and so many players. You know, uh, I give great, great sacrifice from all those people that have stood before me and have stood with me, and I'm appreciative of that, and that's what led us to here today. Uh, very thankful by the administrative support and all those people that continue to believe, hey, this is the right way. We're going to continue to push forward in the direction of our program. Uh, we have not accomplished the things that we are continuing to set forth to accomplish. But again, uh, the day and to be able to sign a contract, it, again, it, so many other people deserve the credit for that. You know, mine's just the face that is tied in with the program, and I'm very fortunate. And then every day I walk in this building, just so honored to be the head football coach here. And, and whatever I can do to serve this great university, this great city, these great young men, Every day I take it with a tremendous amount of pride and privilege. And um, this just shows, hey, the, the, the belief's there, and we're going to continue to do it the right way. I, I'm going to continue to work as hard as I can uh, to put the right step forward and continue to, to represent this university by the young men we put on that field uh, and what they do. And in society, every single day, we're going to continue to strive to be better and better, and, and I couldn't be more thrilled for our future. When you go back to when you first became the head coach, and even before that when you were here, like how, how has this program grown? How have you grown? Yeah, absolutely. We just talked about the players' maturation process. You know, this is my ninth year here, and it's interesting. Sometimes I sit down with recruits, and I tell them it's my ninth year. They said, we haven't met with a single coach that's ever been anywhere for that long. And uh, you know, this is the longest I've spent anywhere in my career, and I, and I love it here. I'm thrilled to be here. And when I first came here, obviously, look, credit to Justin Fuente and those coaches before us. And, and you know, I'm grateful for Mike Norvell. I will never lose sight of, you know, he, he bought me here. Uh, you know, I was kind of... Uh, tooth and nail saying, hey, I'm going to stay in the NFL, and he convinced me to come here, and it's been a blessing since. But I've been able to watch this program grow and, and continue to put ourselves in a national spotlight. But what we're doing with the support of the administration to continue to build things, what we're doing academically, setting records, the type of young men we're being able to do things here in the community, um, 
it's so fun to watch because you know hopefully my fingerprints are, are part of this program and all over what we're able to accomplish and it, it's been fun but man like i said i i, I woke up this morning and, and, and had a conversation with jeff crane hey we got to do this how do we advance i met with laird even this morning hey i want to keep pushing it forward and they they appreciate those challenges because i know what we're capable of and the things we can continue to do here um, that's what's so exciting and then this tremendous university that we can continue to push forward but the growth is, has got to be continual and, and that starts with me continue to do a better job as a head football coach here. We continue to challenge our football players, but man, it's over nine years, it's changed a lot. Uh, plus college football's changed a lot. And we've had this discussion last year um, about the, the changes in, in college football and the way it's going. And we're moving ahead of the curve and, and continue to push. Does this affect like recruiting? Because now, well, first of all, all the things you just talked about, but also just having this extension, like when you go to recruit someone, you say, hey, not only have I been here at this line, but also I'm going to I think it, it does, and I think that shows the commitment. You know, I, like I said, a lot of these guys come in, and, and, and the, a lot of these high school coaches, man, Coach, you've been in that same Memphis Tiger, Leaping Tiger. Now, we've gotten rid of the orange, and that's about it, but they say you've been in that same shirt uh, for nine straight years. So it shows the commitment uh, to be here, uh, even as an assistant, like so many had the opportunity to go elsewhere and decide to stay committed to this place and loyal to this place, and it worked out. Um, and I think recruits see that as well. They want to know. That, hey man, that head coach is going to be there. Uh, he's committed to being here. He, he signed up for it. There's opportunities that come, and uh, man, couldn't be more pleased to continue to lead this program. Brian, I know this has probably been in the making, but it was there a weight lifted off of your shoulder when you signed the extension. Um, look, I I only focus on what I do on day to day. Look, it, it sure is it part of it. But the reality of it is, I, I did not think about it one time last season. It was, hey, how do we continue to improve? Um, in the offseason, it's just there because it's just part of the nature of it. But we've got uh, the administration and the, the agents, they all handle all that stuff. And I can just focus on, hey, because you guys know in December, January, there's not a whole lot of time to think about anything else other than what the, the takes this program to continue to have success. And uh, I'm, I'm thrilled that obviously it's done. Um, but. It wouldn't have affected, you know, if, even if it wasn't signed, it wouldn't have affected the way I go to work every single day and the way we're going to continue to pour into these guys. Um, but I'm pleased, and it just shows the, the support of the administration, and it allows us to continue to focus uh, on improving this place. Was there a point in practice today where you were watching the guys and just thinking about how you're going to be here for multiple more years? Or like, this is great. You know, uh, to be honest, it did not come up in my thought process at practice. It, it didn't. But I truly, every day on my short drive to work, most of you guys know I pretty much live on the main campus and my short drive to work I just think about how grateful I am to be a part of this and then you know this beautiful facility and, and being around the guys and I told them this actually uh, Friday morning we had you know gave them off good Friday in the afternoon and I just told them man every time we all walk in this building we should be grateful and thankful for this opportunity and I think it just all it does is just continues to put in my brain how fortunate we are and and guess what I owe it to a lot of people in this the city and this university continue to work hard um, to put together a great product for them. When you talk about like the perception of stability of the of the program, the athletic department, and locking in your your head football coach, what you guys are doing with the stadium and all that, just what does that do just for the momentum of the department, not just the football? Yeah, I think those that have been around in our administration, I think would would second that. Is my thoughts have always look first and foremost, I've got to do what's best for the program, but I always have the grand side of the entire university and our athletic department in mind. I understand there's a grand thing. I think, right, I want to, I can't wait to go out and help raise money for the stadium, you know, and, and to get this thing circled up because it's going to be great. It's going to be great for our city. No different, right, I, I, the support of our other sports, right? What can we do and, and continue to push in the right direction? I think it all goes hand in hand, right? The success of a football program helps out the success of an athletic department, which ultimately helps out the success of a university, which ultimately, grand scheme of things, helps out our city. And so I understand where this all weaves in together. And it, it, I think it's a, a great day for us to continue to move forward because, man, we're all, all hands on deck from our administration down to our uh, grad assistants here. Like, okay, now let's roll. And what can we do to continue to help this thing move forward? But it, it, momentum is there, and we don't hide from that. We talked about it after the bowl game, the 10 wins, and being able to win a Liberty Bowl uh, versus a, a great Iowa State opponent. Now we can continue to push forward. That momentum's great, and we got to capitalize on it. And I got to do our job on the field, continue in football games and graduate our student athletes. But now the momentum's there. How do we go sell more season tickets? So anybody listening to this, buy your season tickets. Give money to the stadium. Give money to NIL. Continue to give to your Tigers, um, and great things will continue to happen. One of the other things recently, news around the program, obviously, uh, Louis Pizzito, is that kind of like a 
this is where college football is, where things like this happen now? I mean, and, and is, it, is it frustrating to have to, it's another thing to deal with during spring practices, right? There is, Joan, every day I wake up, and I realize this every year in college football, every day I come in the building, there is going to be a challenge that came that I had no idea when I laid my head down the night before that would occur. And it may be a position coach leaving in the middle of spring ball. It may be, hey, the, the, the third string linebacker wants to transfer. It may be, hey, the assistant athletic trainer wants more money. It, there's always going to be something, right? And, and I understand, hey, th that's college football and that's life. And um, look, wish him the best, but I want people that want to be here. Uh, I've showed the commitment to want to be here, and I want coaches that want to be here. They're going to continue to pour into it. Wish him the best, but I'm only focused on bringing in the right type of people. Uh, we'll make a hire where we'll be better off in the long run, and we're going to continue to push. But, man, there's a lot of people that want to be the defense line coach here at the University of Memphis because what a tremendous opportunity it is to be around some great players and continue to do it. Uh, the timeline on it, we'll see. I'm not going to be in a rush, but we're going to find the right fit for us. Uh, and, and there's a lot of people that want to be a part of what we're building. Is that like a difficult conversation because he's only been here for three months? It's not a situation we, we normally see. Uh, difficult situation. Look, I, I I talked to the defense line and said, hey, this is college football. They understand it. Um, some of our defense linemen that have transferred in and maybe this is their third school, they're on their seventh D-line coach. And, you know, reality of it is I, that's the nature of this profession. And not everybody thinks the same way I do. When I came here, I said, I'm going to be committed to the University of Memphis. Um, and, the, and the things that were afforded to me, even as an assistant as myself, um, some great offers came and tremendous opportunities. But Hey, this is where I'm going to be, and this is why I signed up for. Uh, and I, you know, I can't. Each individual has their own ways to choose what they want. If they betterment for them and their family, so be it. But man, there's a lot of people that are dying to be here and move forward. And uh, the conversations, our players understand how special this is, so they're going to be hungry. And, and what it's allowed also is, I told our players, hey, go out there and lead yourselves, go coach yourselves. It's it's a great chance to see what you're capable of. And I think they're taking that bit by the horn and, and seeing what they're doing. It started with our scrimmage on Saturday. The D line had great energy. They've been more focused on meetings these last few days. So uh, I'm excited, and whoever we add is going to uh, do a tremendous job, and it's going to be the right fit for our program. And then I just want to ask, this would have been the first thing, but all this stuff happened. The scrimmage on Saturday, just getting a lot of these new guys coming in, right? This is the first time to see them in that kind of environment. Just what did you learn and what was that like? Yeah, I, you know, I, like I always say, I'm very hesitant to discuss some, not to discuss the new faces, but there are a lot of new guys, and they're all a lot doing a really good job. And it kind of goes back to what I said earlier. We have 17-year-olds out there, like a Brady Close, right? And then we have 23-year-olds out there. And so um, some of those guys are the, the six-year guys that are vets that are stepping up and doing some good things. Some of those are the true freshmen that are here. Um, and then others are the vets. Just continue to say, okay, who can we rely on? Who can we count on? And so what I did was I told our team after that scrimmage is all we're doing is what you see on tape is who we are, and that's your resume. And it's allowing us to say, okay, who can we trust to go out there and play at a high level? And we judge it every day in practice. We grade it, but then coming out uh, in a true scrimmage, it's just playing ball, put the ball down in situational stuff. Um, but a lot of good things and a lot of growth needs to continue. You talked about helmet technology two weeks ago and how it's important for all the coaches to be on the same page as you went about in the conference. Have you been able to talk to some of them? And are yeah, so the helmet communication has been passed. Our conference uh, has received confirmation that they are safe and legal to use. Um, we've got it. We're still fixing some bugs, so I don't ever want to put it out there until we feel very comfortable with the way we want to do it. And truly, the goal is maybe by Thursday or this upcoming Saturday. I hope I can give you guys feedback, but it's been approved and, and ready to roll. Um, you know, you get a vet like Seth Hennigan. I don't think he wants me talking his ear all day, you know, about things. So, and find that fine line. But, yeah, we're, the, the conference and the coaches are excited about this movement um, and technology. They've also, I believe, we're going to go to the – the sideline tablets and those are things moving forward. So uh, those will be challenges. We have not practiced those. I know some teams did that in the bowl game, but uh, look, that's the evolution of college football and it's it's full speed downhill. The brakes are off at 110 miles per hour. And so that's part of the technological advances. And I'm excited to test it out. And I can't wait to share with you guys what we're learning and, and, and good, bad, or indifferent. Thanks, Thank you guys. Appreciate y'all.